Ladies and gentlemen, today I will be telling you everything you need to know about Phantom, which has grown into a hub for all things DeFi and established itself as a layer one network that every crypto enthusiast needs to know about. In this video, you'll learn about what makes Phantom unique, what the future holds for the project, and how you can get involved in this high potential decentralized application ecosystem that is full of lucrative DeFi opportunities. If you like learning about crypto and all the opportunities in this space, make sure you get subscribed and click the bell notification button so you get a heads up whenever I post new weekly crypto videos. Now, this crypto beginner's guide is the first of a series of educational videos that are focused on helping you get started with a variety of different ecosystems in crypto in an accessible and hype free way. And this series is actually brought to you by Trade the Chain or TTC for short, which is a powerful data platform that gives you bespoke insights into the crypto market so you can make better decisions. If you sign up for Trade the Chain using the link in the description below, you can get instant access to data related to crypto sentiment, market data, insights, and research reports, as well as join the global community of professional traders that helps each other find opportunities in the space. So thanks to Trade the Chain for sponsoring this educational series of videos. That said, whether you've been in the crypto space for a while now, or you're just getting started, you've likely come across the idea of the classic blockchain trilemma. And the blockchain trilemma really refers to the idea that an ideal platform on which to build decentralized applications must balance three competing priorities, decentralization, security, and scalability, which makes sense. You hear these words all the time in marketing and in white papers. But here's the trick. The blockchain trilemma's core principle is that only two of these characteristics are theoretically achievable at one time. Every project in this space at one point or another has to make calculated decisions about which of these elements that they prioritize and the trade-offs that they make here determine the design patterns employed to build the network and build things on top of that network. Over the years, plenty of projects have built blockchain networks that seek to strike the perfect balance between each of these trilemma characteristics. And the subject of today's video, Phantom has built a technology stack that's become home to extremely powerful DeFi applications that rely on fast finality of transactions, high transaction throughput, and its developer friendliness and compatibility with the Ethereum ecosystem tools and frameworks. Phantom itself is a project that's based out of South Korea, and it's led by notable technical individuals, a talented technical team, and up until very recently, Chief Technical Advisor Andre Krohn, who is a renowned developer in the DeFi space. And more on his departure from the space uh, towards the end of the video, so make sure you stick around for that juicy drama. Now, the Phantom Opera network that they've built, which has been in mainnet since 2019, is designed to address the trilemma characteristics. It's a highly scalable, decentralized network with smart contracts capabilities, achieving high transaction throughput at low cost without sacrificing on security and decentralization. Now, if we dive a little bit deeper and kind of go under the fold a little bit more, to truly understand Phantom, it's important to note the core layers that make up the functional Phantom Opera network. You have the core layer, which is the decentralized network where transactions are processed. You have the where layer, which is where network services are built, such as data extraction, payments, reward issuance, smart contract functionality, you name it. And then finally, at the very top layer, you have the application layer, which is basically where decentralized applications interact with the network itself. That's where you're gonna be interacting with the network. Now, this is a beginner's guide, but everyone should know how a network functions and what it's all about before spending a penny on tokens. So let's dive a little bit deeper still into the core layer, the, the network itself. Now, at a high, le a high level, uh, the major components of the network are as follows. You have the base layer consensus-driven DAG, or Directed Acyclic Graph, the Lachesis consensus mechanism, and the all-important smart contract execution environment. Now, if we start at that base layer, the underlying data structure stored by nodes on the network is a Directed Acyclic Graph, often called a DAG for short. And I could make an entire video just about DAGs and the relationship they have to blockchains at the data structure level. But that's a little bit too deep in the weeds for a video like this. The most critical thing you need to know about the underlying DAG network structure of Phantom Opera is that its use was a design choice by the team to achieve efficiency at that base layer network, letting nodes store and process data in a minimalistic way that also lends itself to efficiency. 
However, what DAGs offer in efficiency can often come at the cost of decentralization, hearkening back to that trade-off situation I talked about earlier related to the blockchain trilemma. Therefore, Phantom's team was faced with an engineering challenge. Can we create a consensus mechanism for decentralized operation of a directed acyclic graph-based network? And this challenge led to development of the Lachesis consensus algorithm, which enables each node in the Phantom Opera network to participate in the process of ordering and confirming event blocks full of transactions into a cohesive blockchain-like structure. In my opinion, Lachesis is the heart of the Phantom Opera core layer, and it's the most compelling technological component that Phantom brings to the table, at least today, because it enables decentralized consensus amongst a network of nodes on the Phantom Opera network that each store their own DAG data structure as transactions flow through the network. Underneath the hood, the Lachesis consensus methodology is referred to as an asynchronous Byzantine fault tolerance or ABFT system, which may sound intimidating at first, and I totally get that, but in reality, it's a lot more straightforward than you think. Let me break that down a little bit. The word asynchronous refers to the fact that each node in the network does not need to wait for others to reach consensus. In other words, each node can independently reach consensus sharing events and transactions with peers rather than waiting for one block at a time to be voted on, like a traditional blockchain might. This means that consensus in this process is leaderless and not slowed down by the traditional mechanism of the entire network agreeing on a concrete state or block on a given cadence. And this ends up resulting in an adequately decentralized process for validating transactions at scale and at low cost. While this process of confirming event blocks of transactions on Phantom Opera happens amongst primary nodes on the network, the network also features a secondary node type that serves as a validator for the data that resides on these primary nodes, kind of an ex extra validation process. And this validator node set is where the delegated proof of stake environment is established, providing not only a check and balance to the primary nodes operations, but also an opportunity for holders of the native cryptocurrency and phantom FTM to stake to these phantom validator nodes and earn yield for participating in network governance. Now, if we zoom back out a little bit and we look at the where layer for a moment, in the intro, I mentioned that Phantom Opera is a DeFi powerhouse, and, and that is true. A major reason for that, though, is because it's completely accessible for builders and decentralized applications themselves from Ethereum. Now, why is that? Because the execution environment in Phantom is derivative of the Ethereum Virtual Machine, or EVM, which allows smart contracts to be written in Solidity that are deployed to Ethereum to also be deployed to Phantom. This means that developers can easily port their applications over to Phantom, and most, if not all, the standard tools that developers will apply to their work on Ethereum can do the same things in Phantom using the Solidity programming language again. Now, if you pair the relatively mature developer ecosystem around EVM networks with the high throughput, low fees, and fast finality on Phantom Opera, you get a massive DeFi ecosystem with billions of dollars worth of total value locked. And projects like SpookySwap, SpiritSwap, Geist Finance, Taro, and more have garnered significant adoption and provided nice yields for users with the rise of Phantom, and there will likely be many more to come as the network grows over time. Now, with an understanding of what makes Phantom Opera unique from a functional perspective, we can also talk about the tokenomics and how you can get involved in the Phantom space. As I mentioned in passing earlier, the native cryptocurrency in Phantom is FTM, and it's used both for governance and for payment utilities on the network. FTM is available natively on the Phantom Opera network, as well as in the form of a BEP20 and ERC20 token on Binance Smart Chain and Ethereum, respectively. Now, I personally recommend prioritizing getting your hands on native Phantom or FTM so you can actually use it on the Phantom Opera network, but that's totally up to you. Now, the maximum supply of 3.175 billion FTM was issued at launch, so pre-mine haters might be disappointed, but this is very common nowadays. Sorry. However, 2.1 billion uh, were released into circulation, and the remainder is being held for staking rewards to be released over time. That said, in terms of the allocation of that supply of tokens, which is far more important than the, the total supply or the pre-mine, is reported as follows. 40% was allocated to public and private sale investors without vesting. 15% was allocated to advisors with a three-month lockup. 
10% was allocated to the founding team with a 24 month vesting period. 3.6% was allocated to strategic reserve with no vesting schedule and 31.4% to round it all out was reserved for staking rewards, which is set to be distributed daily to stakers over time. The only major critique I can point to on the tokenomics is that there's a heavy allocation to a smallish group in the private, public, and advisor categories, totaling nearly 55% cumulatively, which is generally something that people get a little freaked out about given the propensity for big early holders to dump tokens on the market as they vest. However, as I sit here right now, Almost all these tokens, if not all of them, have been vested already, so fears can be quelled a little bit on that front. Now still, I'd have preferred a little bit less concentration in those early sales, but hey, what can you do? And if we switch gears a little bit here, those who stake FTM can earn yields in the range of 3-12%, to give or take, for participating in the network, subject to a 7-day unstaking period. You might want to consider that if you're trying to put your FTM to work, but if you really want to push the yield and you're tolerant of a little bit more risk, you can also put your FTM to work in the DeFi ecosystem uh, with, again, significantly more risk. But that brings me to the all-important question, which is how a beginner can get involved in the Phantom ecosystem, including what wallet to use. Now, one of the fringe benefits of Phantom being EVM compatible, like we talked about before, is that the common Ethereum ecosystem mainstays like the popular browser-based MetaMask wallet can be used with Phantom. In fact, MetaMask hardware wallet integration works well as well in my testing, which you should be using at all times to protect yourself, by the way, with cold storage. In order to get MetaMask to work, you're going to need to add a custom network to your MetaMask with the following information shown on screen. To do this, simply open MetaMask, drop down the Ethereum mainnet button up top, select Add Network to fill in the Phantom Opera network details, and you can save it right like that. If you'd like to use a native wallet built explicitly for Phantom, where you can easily stake FTM, I'd recommend FWallet, the official wallet for the Phantom ecosystem, which is compatible with Ledger hardware wallets for cold storage. Again, recommended. Note how I'm only recommending cold storage here, both for MetaMask and FWallet, which is a better practice, a best practice for storing anything but nominal amounts of cryptocurrency, so please use hardware wallets. Once you have a wallet, you can stake FTM natively on Phantom Opera, or you can use one of the premier decentralized exchanges like SpookySwap to get exposure to other tokens on Phantom's network using swap features. Those familiar with the risks of DeFi, such as impermanent loss, for example, can also earn significant yield by contributing liquidity to liquidity pools and yield farming on these same DeFi protocols as well. Bear in mind your local regulations and the significant risks here. Please be safe and remember my channel is not about buying tokens, it's about education. So do not consider a single element of this video a call to action to buy tokens nor securities of any kind. Now, we've covered quite a bit of ground today, from fundamentals and history of Phantom to how it works and the main layers that make it a DeFi powerhouse, and all the way through to tokenomics and how you can get started. Now, to bring it all together, though, I want to address what the future holds for Phantom in 2022 and beyond. Firstly, there's ongoing governance decision-making going on to lower the threshold of FTM holdings for validator node operators, which is basically right now set to 500,000 minimum, and there are proposals to lower this minimum stake for validator node operations for 250k, 100k, and 50k, which at the time of recording, we're not sure what that's going to be yet. And I mentioned early on in this video some of the drama, and that is one of the foremost developers and researchers in the Phantom ecosystem, well, actually not just Phantom, but DeFi in general, Andre Krohn, has now departed the crypto space entirely. And this event, paired with the fear, uncertainty, and doubt that came with it, related to the future of the Phantom ecosystem, drove markets into deep losses in the Phantom space. For any beginner looking to enter into Phantom, you may be wondering what caused this steep sell-off here in the first quarter of 2022, and this drama related to Andre Krohn and his partner, or I guess a partner in the space, Anton Nell, leaving would be one of the reasons. That said, the future of Phantom is not in jeopardy, despite early fears, and the Phantom core team has already reaffirmed that building will continue and nothing's really changed. So the DeFi space in general will miss Andre Krohn's inventions in many ways, but others will take up the mantle and build things in the space that are both innovative and appealing from a yield perspective. For now, look at some of the mainstay DeFi projects that already exist on the Phantom Opera network and delve deeply into research as to what the projects do, how they generate yield, and figure out which projects that you find appealing before funneling money into them. 
the future of Phantom in the DeFi space is only just beginning. And as the tides of the broader crypto market continue to turn bearish, now is the time for builders to build the next generation of products atop networks like Phantom that have a whole heck of a lot of potential for the future. Now, I want to thank you for watching this beginner's guide on Phantom, and I hope that this will serve as a springboard for you to do deeper due diligence on the Phantom ecosystem as you explore the opportunities therein. If you have some time to stick around, check out some of my other deep dives on some of the hottest crypto projects in the space. Hope you have a wonderful day, and until next time, cheers.